I mean, if you, if you remain the same, you don't make no progress. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. Aren't you glad you got to come? Amen. Amen. I, I tell you, the Lord has been merciful. Now, now think about this. You remove, you remove the mercies of God, you wouldn't be here. That mercy is very important. Isn't it? Thank God for mercy. That mercy is something you do not deserve. I mean, it'll lower you down. But it's unexplainable, isn't it? Could anybody give us a real, true definition for mercy? I doubt it. I doubt it. Mercy is very, very important. And thank God we've got it. <laughs> we got something we do not deserve. We got something we cannot explain. Cannot measure. Amen. Cannot be defeated. i just give you one thought right there. I just thought what I'm going to preach you. Just give you one thought right there. That mercy speaks of the resurrection. Who can defeat the resurrection? <laughs> if you find him, send him by. <laughs> we'll even let him preach. <laughs> if, he, if he can defeat the resurrection, we'll just turn service over to him. Can't be. Can't be. Now in the book of John, chapter 20, John chapter 20, we find here's the story of Mary Magdalene, and uh, we find that she rises early, goes to the sepulcher, she sees the tomb is empty, runs back to Peter, and that other disciple of the Lord, they come and see the place where he has laid. He's not here. They have taken him away. Amen. Now, think together for a little while on Mary Magdalene's search for the Lord. Mary Magdalene was searching diligently for the Lord. Number one question, why was she searching diligently for the Lord? And you, you line of thought, why, why do you search for the Lord? Well, number one, she remembered where he found her. She, uh, I believe, remembers how low she was. She remembers, remembers how defeated in the battle she was. And we find the Lord came, came to where she was and picked her up. Could I give a little personal testimony right there? I, I remember when I was lost. Yes. Yes. Does anybody remember when you was lost? Yes. Very unpleasant thoughts. I, I well remember the fear that I had of dying when I was lost. I feared death because I knew it was the gateway to hell. Had such fear of dying and going to hell. Nobody could convince me I wasn't going to hell. I knew I was. I was afraid to go on a journey. I was afraid I'd get killed because I was going to hell. I was afraid to go to work. Of course, I was lazy too. Can anybody identify with that? I was afraid to go to sleep at night. I was afraid I'd die during the night and go to hell. 
Praise God. That's where the Lord found me. Isn't it wonderful? My, my. There could have been a million and more reasons why he should have never approached me. Been a million and more reasons why he should just kick me off into hell and forgot me. But he patiently, compassionately, stepped up the side of me and said, Earl, you're close to judgment. You deserve to go to hell. But if you'll let me, I'll settle this out of court for you. His presence because I remember where he found me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where would I be called if he hadn't found me? Yeah, yeah. Then not only, but Mary Magdalene, she remembered the words of the Lord, and she knew this from personal experience. Without him, I can do nothing. That's the words of our Lord Himself. Without me, you can do nothing. Helpless. Helpless without him. Then number three. Now keep in mind, she had seven devils. To the flesh, seven devils had a lot to offer her. He paid a great price for you. He may even put you in Hollywood. He may put you on a high esteem. Amen. He may even get you thinking you're something you're not. <laughs> but she could say, he, hear me, he is the best thing that ever happened to me. Little song we sometimes sing along the way goes something like this. House and land I may not own, wealth or riches to be known. Little person in this world I may be, but I claim Jesus first. That's enough for me. Some folks live on wealth and pride. I am poor but satisfied. Great Jehovah owns the world, don't you see? Underneath his loving wing. I'm as happy as can be. I claim Jesus first. That's enough. Amen. Oh, how precious is his grace. When you know the time and place. You quit this world of sin down on your knees. Once he caught my fallen soul. Now it's better felt than told. I claim Jesus first. That's enough. God's own child by birth. Highest honor on this earth. I claim Jesus first. That's enough for me. Amen. She's seeking him. Seeking him. Seeking his presence because she knows where he found her. She knows without him she can do nothing. She knows she's tried it all. Tried it all. She knows he's the best thing ever happened to her. Amen. That's, that's what she's searching for. Amen. Amen. Now, consider her search. Consider her search. Number one, her early rising. Early rising. David said, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. That means he's first. Can you truly say he is first? Early will I seek thee, my soul thirsty for thee, my flesh longer for thee in the dry and thirsty land where no water is. Something very unusual right there. You can easily understand how the soul thirsts for him. But he said the flesh, contrary to nature, has got a hungry for it. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longer for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Early. She can, she's out early. Out early. I'm going to tell you something right here that you won't believe. I tell you a lot of things you won't believe. <laughs> If you don't believe it, just listen. 
Speaking about early rising, that's honorable. Sure it is. Sure. Early rising. I was lying in bed. Hear me? I forgot your undivided attention. Lying in bed about 10 o'clock one morning, waiting on Brother Glass to get up. <laughs> He's not hearing. <laughs> and I said as humbly, sincere as I knew how, Lord, what would you have me to do today? He said, get up! She rises early. Rises early. I don't say this to discourage you, but her early rising didn't discover him. She didn't find him. She didn't find him in her early rising. And then she sought the aid of others. No doubt, Brother Carl, we have some of the best of people in the congregation. Right. She'd be here this morning pleading, Carl, help me find him. Mm-hmm. Let me help me find him. Go to every one of you, help me find him. Tell me something that will help me to find him. Searching, 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 searching the aid of others, help me find him. Even the angels, help me find him, help me find him. Help me find him. My heart's a burning for him. My heart's a bleeding for him. I've got to have him. Help me find him. Yeah. But although she went to all that extreme, it didn't help. Right. She still got her tears. Yeah. She's still a weeping. She's still a singing. Mm-hmm. And then her patience. The disciples came, they looked in, they said, he's gone, all hopes are gone, went back to the house, but not Mary Magdalene. She's still waiting. Has I not known, has I not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faineth not, neither is worth, no searching of his understanding. He gave a power to the faith, them have no mind, he increases. Even the youth shall fade and be worth. The young man shall utterly fall, but they that wait Amen. upon the Lord. When you're the shrimp, not up with the wings of eagles. Run, not be weary, walking nothing. Yeah. She said, I'm not leaving. Amen. She's not going to give up. Amen. She may die. She may go under in defeat, but she's not going to give up. Amen. But she don't find him. She's determined to wait, but she don't find him. Don't find him. Speaking to the gardener. She said, if you took him away, show me where you put him. I'll go get him. I like that. Yeah. In her mind, she knows he's dead. She knows a dead man can't help her, but she wants to help him. What about that? What do you really want to do for the Lord? Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah, if it wasn't for what he did for us, would any of us be here this morning? Yeah. She is Amen. searching! Diligently for him that she might do something for him. Yes, but don't help. You say, preacher, why has she not found him? All these things that she had done are honorable. Things that God in heaven has honored. Yes, but they're failing for her. Would you not agree? She's not found him yet. Well, I gave you two reasons why she hadn't found him. Number one, hear me, hear me, she is walking in the wilderness. What about Glenn? No tears, no early rising, no seeking the help from others, no even uh, asking the angels to help. She is walking in the wilderness. And normally speaking, you don't make no progress in the wilderness. After wandering 40 years in the wilderness, the children of Israel, how much closer are they to Canaan? After 40 years wandering in the wilderness. How much closer are they? Have they gained any ground at all? I say people just don't make any progress to speak of when they're walking in the wilderness. If the truth was known, I wouldn't want to tell you how much time I spent walking in the wilderness. 
Would you like to stand and tell us how much you have accomplished walking in the wilderness? For the most people, people are just walking in circles. Walking in their sleep. And talking to themselves. David, did you ever walk in the wilderness at all? <laughs> no need to ask anybody else, is it? said, David been there. And you know all the rest of us have been there. For the most part, you never find, hear me, no real treasures walking in the wilderness. You lose your treasures. You won't believe this. Another thing you won't believe. One of my best friends backed my little car up to a dumpster <laughs> and throwed all my treasures away. Well, if it had been roomy, would I mean, you don't really gain anything walking in the wilderness. Tears. Defeat. Yeah. Sinking. That's, that's Mary Magdalene. Would you not agree? That's, yeah. She loved the Lord. Sure she did. But anybody, although they love the Lord tremendously, are subject to slip and get out there in the wilderness and walk. Yeah. Don't you think it'd be good to take a little inventory? How much time am I spending in the wilderness? Yeah. And then, wouldn't it be good to take a computer and add up how much you have accomplished while you've been walking in the wilderness? Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be good to put an evaluation on yourself, see how much, how much, you know what I mean? How I've increased my value walking in the world. I asked a fellow one time, I said, how long has it been since some sure enough intelligent man has sat down with you and explained to you how great you are? Oh, he said, nobody knows that much. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, you do not make very much progress, if any at all, wandering in the wilderness. And then not only, beloved, but listen, beloved, that walking in the wilderness, one more reason why she's there, why she is walking in the wilderness. Number one is her dullness of hearing. Someone said, well, preacher, I don't believe the Lord talks to people. Let me say this humbly and tenderly. God really enjoys talking to people that will listen to him. Yeah, yeah. Amen. If you won't listen to him, hear me, if you won't listen to him, he'll talk to somebody else. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. If you'll say, speak, Lord, thy servant, hear, he'll talk to you. Sure will. Give you his undivided attention if you listen to him. If he won't talk to you, maybe you need to give him an ear. Try it and see. Try listening to him and see. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I appreciate the way you obey the Lord, brother Carl. Keep it up. Listen, she's in the wilderness because she has. Dullness, dullness, dullness of hearing. Yes, preacher. Don't you believe? You hear me? That the Lord in her presence preached on his death? Don't you believe he preached on his burial? Yes, sir. Yes. Don't you believe he preached on his resurrection? Yes. If she'd have heard that, why is she looking for a dead man? Amen. It's that simple. <laughs> you don't have to be a doctor to understand that. She to listen to him, give him an ear, preaching on his death, his burial, resurrection. She to know better than to search for a dead man. Yeah, Amen. That is good, isn't it? Amen. Who said that? Yeah. I don't know who taught you, but they did a good job. You're no good preacher when you're here. Amen. Well, then not only, not only, but listen, beloved, her faith, her faith was very weak or dead. She'd had real faith. She wouldn't been looking for a dead man. That's simple enough, isn't it? Real faith will accomplish things. 
let me, let me give you just a little personal experience here in regards to faith, I believe. Back in February, I was out in Amarillo, Texas. Brother Glenn Stocker. Brother Glenn told me, said, Earl, I'm going to take you a ride in my airplane. Number one, I didn't believe he had one. <laughs> my faith was weak. And number two was this. I don't believe I'll go. For, I've got some plans for the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and number three, my faith is just too weak for that. We got out there, and sure enough, there was a plane there. We pushed that thing out on the runway, and he cranked it up. And I got to walking around, you know what I mean, to, trying to have some deep meditation, <laughs> trying to make a right decision, and I couldn't find one to make. <laughs> this is my final flight. <laughs> I knew it was. And I said, Lord, my faith is just not sufficient. He said, I'll let you go in mine. When your faith gets weak, boy, it is. <laughs> now listen to me. Didn't Paul say something like this? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, all the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave me his faith. His faith. He alone knew his faith. Amen. Go in his faith. Yes, for sure. Isn't that what it said? Yeah. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live it by the faith, the faith. of the Son of God who <laughs> loved me and gave me faith. When your faith gets weak, he'll give you a jump start. Yes. <laughs> Amen. I mean, in my mind still I knew he, he couldn't fly that plane. He couldn't fly that plane. As dumb as he was, he couldn't fly that plane. <laughs> but I got in that thing in the faith that the Lord loaned me. I relaxed, kicked back, and had a pleasant flight. Come back, he even landed. That's right. Go in his faith. In the Lord's faith. Amen. It's available! Yes. But her faith was weak! She didn't even think the Lord had his faith. She thought the Lord was dead! Yes, right. That means defeat in the wilderness. That means wandering in the wilderness, accomplishing nothing. Dying, dying in the wilderness. That's what it means. And then the next thing I want to call your attention to is this. The reason she didn't find him, hear me? Now you might want to make this a matter of prayer, but what she's looking for doesn't exist. Amen. <laughs> I say what she is looking for does not exist. As it is, she is searching as you would search for a needle in a haystack. Now, if there had been a needle in that haystack, after a while she'd have found it. But there's no needle in that haystack. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. She could have searched for this day. Took every little blade of grass and laid it aside and still never found what she was looking for. Because it don't exist. How can you find something that doesn't exist? Christ is not dead. He's alive. He's alive. I say again, she with tears, early rising, fasting, patient, seeking the aid of others, looking for something that does not exist. Amen. How long? The smartest man in the crowd. Would you stand up? Who's he at? How long, how long will it take you to find something that does not exist? And still won't find it. She could have been searching for it right now and still wouldn't find it. But she's not going to last long. That wilderness will kill you. You ever been there? You have been in the wilderness? How'd you enjoy it? She's a dying people. She's a dying. She's not going to last long. This body won't stand with so much. It's going under. She's being defeated. Her tears still flowing. 
Amen. But that, isn't it sweet and isn't it wonderful? That when we've come in the wilderness to the last step, Brother Carl, and we're going under it never rise again, he's still mindful of us. Oh, he is. Hallelujah! He's still mindful of us. When I cannot get to where he is, he can always, always get to me. I, lo- I love the scripture in the book of Hebrews. See it, therefore, that we have a great high priest passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But was in all point. Give the likes we are, yet without sin. Let us, that's me and you. Therefore, come boldly. According to that, I don't believe we even have to knock. I don't believe he's listening for a knock. I think he's listening. Look, it says, come on in. Come on in. The door's open. Invitation to give it. Come on in. Sometimes I wonder, he says, why in the world they stand out to knock? Maybe they're trying to make an impression. Maybe they think the pastor will come by and see them knocking. 12 o'clock, he's still knocking. And the, and the invitation is, come on in. Why are you standing at that 12 o'clock still knocking when he said, come on in? Yes, yes. uh, I think maybe they're trying to get their name in the sword of the Lord. Yes. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, come on in. Come boldly. Yes, sir. Well, I said that to say this. Sometimes my faith gets so weak, I can't get there. I've got the invitation. He told me to come on in. But I, I can't even knock. I'm down. But when I can't get to him, he can always get to me. <laughs> you won't believe it. Another thing you won't believe. Give me about two more minutes more clothes. Country minutes. And the line of Peter's right. One day a thousand years, a thousand years one day. Two minutes in the line of that. Here she is, she's weeping. Her early, hear me! Her, her, her early rising has failed. Right. The seeking the aid of others has failed. Right. Patience has failed. Yeah. Even tears has failed. She's a dying. She's not going to last long. No. Guarantee you, she's not going to last long. Right. You're going under. <coughs> Our lovely Lord, isn't it wonderful? Amen. I'm going to be honest with you. Some of the greater experiences I've ever had in all my life with the Lord was after I give up. <laughs> that gives the flesh a lot to boast in, though. <laughs> it's the truth. After I had given up, he come on the scene. Yeah. <coughs> bye, bye. Isn't it wonderful? Amen. Isn't it wonderful? Here's a picture of it. The Lord, after his resurrection, see, he's alive. That's the reason. That's the reason what she's searching for doesn't exist. He's not in that grave. He's not dead. He's alive. Ah, isn't he wonderful? Amen. Praise the Lord. Here's the picture of it. She's sinking. She's going under. She's not going to last long. If I know anything about the Lord's schedule after his resurrection, number one, take the blood to the mercy seat. Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. He's on his way. Amen. Some of you got this telephone system. You'll be talking to somebody. You'll have another call to come in. Yeah. You'll say to the existing that you're talking to, I'm going to put you on hold. Got another call coming in. He's on his way to heaven with the blood for the mercy seat, but he hears her cries. He hears her cries. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah! Glory be to God. Amen. Soon she'll be water over the dam. Oh, hope's gone. Help the Paul. Yeah. After many days, stars the sun didn't appear. All hopes that we ever had to be in safe sail away. But the Lord, a little bit. Amen. When I am weak, He's strong. Amen. When I'm a thing, He's got life. When I cannot reach Him, He can go down under me. Pick me up. Let me say it again. One cold, 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 cold night. Lord, people, hear me. It was so cold you'd have to get in the deep freeze, get thawed out. I mean, it was cold. I stand out on that back porch and, oh, listen, beloved, seemed like everything that could happen already happened. 
I, I, no doubt I had some friends, but they was out of my reach. I couldn't reach. I didn't know you people then. They was out of my reach. I was standing there in defeat. In defeat. All of a sudden, unexpected. He wasn't honoring my faith. He wasn't honoring my great ability. He wasn't honoring my great muscle strength. But he just said, mercy, step down on my level. Some people say, I don't believe that the Lord would identify with fallen men. He's God. He can do anything. He takes an ocean to do. Tell, tell him that. <laughs> convince him he can't do it. Go ahead and convince him he can't do some things. <laughs> step down on my level. Down a little bit below me. Look up. Give me a salute. Give me, give me a salute with both hands. Said, I just decided what I've done for others, I do for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. So we find me love. She's a fainting, going under. He knows she, he get there as fast as lightning and back, but he knows she won't last that long. Without him, it's all over. I say, people, listen to me, listen to me. There's some things, hear me, that only the Lord can do for you. If he don't do it, it'll go undone. If he doesn't do it, you can forget it. And our lovely Lord, bless his name, he just, Brother Carl, stepped over there. She's supposed him to be the gardener. She, she's supposed him to be the one that took him away and hid him somewhere. Isn't it wonderful? All he had to do was just say, Mary. That's all. When he said, Mary, the tears are gone. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Hallelujah, preacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When he said, Mary, she's still on firm foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When he said, Mary, the joy floods. Whom having not seen, you love, and whom though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Mad, she took a Holy Ghost sleep over in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3. <laughs> unto him that's able, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you could ask, because they call the power that opens in you. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Amen. Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, preacher. Give me one more second or two, and I'm going to close. I don't believe that she spent a lot of time in the wilderness on her own. <laughs> Come on, Carl. 